we're talking Clemson, South Carolina, straight up Palmetto week in the South Carolina state. So before we get to that, do you think there was just a little bit of a factor, Jason, that Clemson thought, hey, we still own this conference and we can't do anything about what's going to happen the next few weeks? This team may go on to go play in the ACC championship game, but we're going to put our stamp down and show them that this is a statement that we still own this conference. Absolutely. I think that played a factor. Um, Dabo Sweeney said after the game that one of the messages he sent to the team, you know, before the Wake Forest game was if they're going to win the league, they're not doing it here. They're going to have to go win it in Boston. They're not going to do it here. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that was a factor. You know, it was senior day guys like um, James Skowski playing and Brandon Spector, those two linebackers playing their final home games of their careers. Emotions were high. And, um, it, like I said, that defense just set the tone from the beginning of the game. And and Clemson's also got the longest active home winning streak in the country. So that's I think that's another thing, you know, defending your home turf. They take a lot of pride in that winning streak, those, those – there's only six seniors on those six super seniors on that team. They're the only guys on the roster that's ever lost a game in Death Valley in their careers. And the, the, the other, you know, the senior class that aren't the super seniors, they wanted to go out having never lost a game at home and they, they went out and did it. I, I think that played a, you know, a huge role when it comes to the coach staff using that message as motivation. Jason, if we would have been here a few months ago and I would have said that entering the South Carolina game, that Clemson would have two more wins than South Carolina, I don't know how many people would have believed us, including <laughs> myself. Not me either. Not me either. This, this South Carolina team, you know, they're playing well the last few weeks. I mean, they, they beat the brakes off Florida. And, and I know that Florida team's in disarray right now, but, you know, it's still got a lot of talent. And – they, they got behind early to Missouri and, you know, made a valiant comeback. What, they lose by three points? I think they, they, they came all the way yep. back and lost by three. And, and then they beat Auburn last week. You know, those aren't that's not a scrub football team. You know, they're not a playoff team by any stretch, but it's not some scrub. You know, th this team's been playing well since they – um God, his name escapes me right off the top. Man. The guy playing quarterback for him has been playing quarterback the last three weeks. Um, Brown, man, Jason Brown or something like that. I yep. forget his name. Jason Brown. That's him. Yeah, he, you know, he he's come in and the offense seems to have gotten more of an identity since he's been taking the snaps. And um, you know, I don't think this game in Columbia is the gimme game a lot of Clemson fans think it is. Uh, you know, I the spreads 12 and a half, 13 points, whatever it is. I think that's a little deceiving. This Clemson team has not played well on the road all season long. Night game, Williams Bryce Stadium. The place is gonna it's gonna be raucous. Um and, and this Clemson team is just littered with youth, not a lot of experience playing in environments like that. So um I don't think this game's gonna is a gimme game by any stretch. I mean I I I don't even know how confident I am in picking Clemson to go in there and win, to be honest. I mean, I well, can easily see them coming out of there with an L. Yeah, how many times, uh, especially earlier in the season, was Clemson a two-touchdown favorite? And uh, it turned out to be a nail-biter.